Wow, guys, there used to be 1,022 buildings on this property. No way. Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be diving into a little bit of history here in Colorado. We are at the decommissioned military base Camp Hale, which is located just off of Highway 24. Now this place has an outstanding history and actually has been known to be one of the most important divisions of all of the military history because of the work that they did right here at this camp in Colorado. We're going to go look at the grounds, see what is still here, what has changed, and also learn a little bit about the 10th Mountain Division. Just after entering Camp Hale, you find this sign, which clearly has a few bullet holes in it. But this is a historic military weapons area. We are not allowed to touch or remove any unknown objects. So even though a lot of people would probably love to come out here and do some metal detecting, that is prohibited on these grounds. Now, while there are a few roadways that still are in very good condition, most of this area is being slowly reclaimed by nature. But along the way, especially if you can see it kind of from above, you can still see where the roads once ran through this military base. At one point in time, this base would have had thousands upon thousands of people here. In fact, at its heyday, about 15,000 troops were training in this area with their mountaineering skills, including skiing and rock climbing. It was a perfect location for all of that to happen. And it's interesting to see now this large field-like area where you can still see some of the structure's footprints from above. You can also see some of the roadways that look as though they're slowly fading into the distance. Despite the fact that they are fading into the distance, you will find posts like these. This one says 13th Street on one side and A Street on the other. That would have marked the corner of where this roadway and this roadway would have come together at the base. Now, why do they have road signs if there's no roadway? Well, a lot of times they want to keep things in historical context so you can still envision what would have been here. If you pull up a photo of Camp Hale from above, the roadways are all clearly marked and this kind of allows you to see what you're looking at in more modern context. And I really appreciate that they've done that here, but there's more here, so let's go explore some more. As we have driven toward the campground area of Camp Hale, we actually are finding more and more unique things kind of venturing through the camp. For example, this roadway that we were just coming in on used to go across the Eagle River in several places, and you can see where the old bridges were. I'll show you those in just a few moments. But also, as we kind of come to this end where it starts to turn toward the campground, there's another sign explaining more of the historical context of this location. This is a wonderful site for knowledge and getting some brain wrinkles 
examples when it comes to some of our military history. I definitely encourage you all to check into this because it is something that is very unique and a lot of people don't know about this one. I, I'm not sure how I didn't know about this one personally, but it is fascinating. The history here is expansive. Let me show you some more. It is here that we learn a little bit more about the ski training that Camp Hale hosted. In fact, the 10th Mountain Division was America's only division that was specifically trained for mountain warfare. And each of the people serving needed to know how to ski. You can see in these photos not only what it looked like whenever they were doing these trainings, but also what some of the buildings would have looked like at that time. Now, most of these buildings have been removed or have fallen, and so they are no longer here. But the ghosts of the past living through the photos show us that these mountain passes were difficult and cruel, and they would be snowshoeing up them and having to climb with heavy packs. You see here what exactly it took to get mountain ready for this particular style of combat. It was right here, right here, that they would go up the heavily treed mounds and they would have to do these missions for training. And it wasn't just like your average recreational skiing where you just get to ride a lift up and then come back down. They would have to trudge up and then they would have to use maneuvers to come back down. It was called the Army's version of skiing because they had maneuvers and things like that that still are very similar to the regular instruction of the military. For example, have you ever seen a skiing about face? They have. In fact, they were doing it pretty frequently on these hills right before us. Now, I always tell you to put yourself into the thought of what it would have been like to be in that moment. Can you imagine you have this expertise already where you're really good at something, so you come here so you can serve your country, and then you get here and you realize that even though you're an expert at what you do, this is not how you normally do it. So you had to learn how to kind of grit down and bear through some of the toughest training in the entire military. In fact, it has been compared that the 10th Mountain Division would, in more modern terms, be compared to like an Army Ranger or a Navy SEAL because of the amount of work that went into their training. That is wild. It is here at the corner of 21st and B Street that you can actually get back to a lake that I covered on my other video about Highway 24. It's a beautiful lake and it has a little trailhead marker and everything, so you can go and check out something absolutely spectacular. But on the opposite side of the road over here is one of the bridges that no longer is in existence. In fact, here you see the 21st Street going on to B Street, which is the one we are currently on, and that's the one that goes out to the campground is B Street. There is my van and then over here you'll notice that there's what looks like a pull-off but it's not actually a pull-off. It's where the road used to continue forward to go and match the other side over here. It is here that we get a glimpse at the Eagle River and some of the pylons which used to secure the bridge that would pass through this area. An interesting fact about the Eagle River is that when the military moved into this region the Eagle River actually used to flow in more of a snake-like pattern. They straightened out the river to make it work better for the overall layout of the base itself. Now by rerouting the river, they could actually have it flow alongside the roadways. So on that side there is a straight stretch of road, and on this side there is a straight stretch of road, and splitting the middle is the Eagle River. The Eagle River was very important for keeping this area in the state that it is currently as well, and there's been talk of returning the river to its original course as the land continues to be encroached upon by the nature once again. And so I'm very interested to see what happens with this site over time. Although this is a historic site, nature will be nature. And so, will nature again twist and turn? Only time can tell.
just before crossing over the Eagle River at the bridge that is still intact, we find out about entertainment here at Camp Hale. A couple of historic photos that are a little worse for wear because of the sun talks a little bit more about how this was considered to be almost a small city. The camp provided entertainment and recreation for all of the residents. There were movie theaters, service clubs, a field house, a newspaper, and they even had a camp band. They celebrated major holidays. They had USO shows. It was a lively atmosphere despite all the work that went into the training that happened here and at one point in time this was the thriving epicenter of life here in the mountains and so it's kind of interesting to see how that life has faded and is no more instead there are bushes and trees tall prairie grasses and mountains that have gone untouched for years if you listen hard enough you can probably still hear the military commands kind of echoing through the mountainside. It goes on to tell us a bit more about what people would do for fun. They had two weekend passes a month and they would be able to travel all over this area. Many of them enjoyed skiing so much that they would visit ski areas such as Aspen. Memories of Colorado led to veterans of the 10th Mountain Division returning here after the war and many of them retired into their twilight years in Colorado. It is just beyond the bridge, however, that you see one of the most intact pieces of military history still remaining here at Camp Hale. Many of the buildings had to be removed because of asbestos and lead paint. However, the shell of this one still remains. I will say when I was going down the highway, I could look over and physically see this because it is so large. You're not allowed to go inside. However, you can see a debris field of what was left over. And then the shell itself, this was a very large building. And the only sign of life here, other than one small structure, which I'll show you as we kind of depart Camp Hale. We are standing in the center of what used to be about 13,000 acres of military. Much like many of the locations we have been to in Colorado, this is a ghost town. It is a ghost town of a very different sort. Most of the ghost towns you encounter are mining communities that had their heyday and then whenever things started slowing down, people would just leave to try to seek fame and fortune elsewhere. But this is a very different story. This was an intentional community that picked up and left just as quickly as it was created. Just beyond the building, you find this crag right here. And this is where many of the mountain division would have learned to be expert mountain men. In fact, right here during the summer and winter months, they were trying to climb. They had to master both summer and winter climbing in order for them to be the most efficient whenever they were deployed. Engineering companies of the 10th became skilled at building what they called monkey bridges and tramways. Why? Because they had to be able to keep their troops supplies. Medics likewise let nothing stop them from treating and retrieving their wounded. And many of the times this mountain right here would be what was 
was the make or break moment whenever the deployment happened. Now climbers still flock to this area because of these very crag faces and you can often see around Colorado people scaling up using only their fingers and toes to make it to the very top. Now these are now more recreational skills but at the time it was very necessary so that they could get the advantage against the enemy when deployed and I think it's very interesting to see where that would have started right here in Colorado. But also, something else that's kind of fascinating is the more you look at the signs, the more you learn. And they actually were considered to be pretty atop of the curve at the time when it came to the equipment. But looking back on that now, it was extremely primitive equipment. It was just something that not a lot of people were doing. So there wasn't a lot of technology behind it. So they were literally scaling up these things in some cases just by hand with no safety. And it was something that took a little bit of time and skill to learn. Some of the people who came here might have been experts when it came to skiing, but had no knowledge whatsoever when it came to the crag. But it didn't matter. They all had to be versed in every single skill. So, this was a struggle wall for many, but ultimately this was what made the biggest difference whenever they did go abroad and whenever they would fight against the enemy. So looking on this, again, envision yourself, someone standing down here saying, you can do it, get up the wall, go, 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 in typical drill sergeant fashion. Meanwhile, People are scurrying up like ants, finding grips that are barely the size of their fingers. That would be wild. Now today we're just taking a self-guided driving tour. You can find out some more information about this whenever you research Camp Hale. But also if you are interested in taking more of an interpretive tour with a tour guide, they do have some of those available in the area also, including some of the Jeep tours, which will take you up into the mountains so you can see the craziness that also was part of the training. I think that's kind of fascinating that they've made this so user friendly though so you can come up here and get a visual in your mind even though there aren't as many buildings left. And this is a good site. This is a good site with so much information that I just personally didn't know. And I'm really fascinated by all of the details so I can't wait to get home and research this even more than I already have. Now, the last stop we're gonna make today is this one. There's a little picnic area just as you come in with a special sign and also a challenge that says, can you imagine this valley full of soldiers training for war? Kind of what we've been talking about. Can you imagine all of the different buildings that would have been here? Looking at the historic photos, can you think what it would be like to have been stationed here? What would you have thought about the weather whenever it was the cold, brutal winter? What would you have thought when it was the summer and it was this nice, beautiful climate that we're currently experiencing? What would you have thought? Also, we have this dedication plaque. From 1958 to 1964, Camp Hale played an important role as a training site for the Tibetan freedom fighters. They were trained by the CIA. Many of these brave men lost their lives in their own struggles for freedom. And there is a quote here that I want to read you. They were the best and the bravest of their generation. And we wept together when they were killed fighting alongside their countrymen. I think this and other signs that we found around this site just go to tell you that a piece of land can mean many things to many people. It can serve many purposes. And as time passes, it will continue to serve even more. This particular area of Colorado was definitely impacted by the 10th Mountain Division. Even to this date, many of the ski resorts that we currently recreate at had something to do with the ties that were made all the way back in the 40s when this was an active military base. Other countries have been impacted by this space as well, even though it's in the middle of the United States. It just goes to show though that there's a lot that can happen in a single location and to tell the stories of those places and to learn a little bit more, it's quite fascinating and definitely something that I have enjoyed doing today. If you have enjoyed coming along with me to Camp Hale and learning a little bit more about this particular location, please leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and please do a few searches of your own to research this even further. There's several other documentary style things from PBS on YouTube that I encourage you to check out. They are fascinating, they give good context, and also they have some historic video that 
is just so, so good. I definitely encourage you to do that. Remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we're definitely here for a good time. And learning about places like this is such a good time because you get so many cool brain wrinkles. Until next time guys, bye.